Hi, and welcome to the digital job site where the boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. And this, this tutorial, I'm going to try to address some of the things that come up for anyone that's trying to make the switch to digital design. And I've called it the switch up to sketch up. And there's some, some tips that I wanted to, to show to help get past some of the frustrations new users of SketchUp encounter when they're trying to um, switch from doing hand sketches and and uh, diagrams and, and going into the the digital realm, uh, so to speak, for for doing design. So I want to do this in two parts. In the first part, I want to show how to manipulate uh, the different items in a drawing such as or a model such as this like these like the columns or these uh, cabinets and cabinet doors and I'll show the the difference between using the scale tool and the move tool and uh, the benefits of those uh, two different methods and then along the way give an idea of different uh, benefits or functions for using items that are either grouped or um, made into components. And then in part two, I'll go through the steps I used for creating some of the things in this model, um, like these, uh, the columns, uh, these cabinet doors, and, um, and some things like that. So let's get started with part one, and to do that I'm going to hide Mr. Sang here. I like to throw a person in some of these models to kind of give some scale to it. So we're going to hide him, put him out of, uh, give him a, a break, and then turn off the shadows, which will uh, speed up the way the model moves. Anyways, um, in a situation like this, I've just kind of drawn, created a model here, and this is kind of the idea of something you might see in a in a basement remodel project and I've just made some assumptions. One is that the the wall space would be divided into three equal parts and a fireplace and a TV in the middle, some cabinets. This might have some bookshelves on top but I didn't model those in here. And in drawing this I left some some kludgy things here just to show the benefits of adjusting things in a digital format. And one of the things was uh, these uh, columns, relieved columns that I've put on either side of this, um, what might be a gas fireplace. And these are, are recessed with a with the bellow you can see as I pivot around. And if we want to adjust that, if this was like a preliminary design and want to do some adjusting to it, I created a uh, group of components. You can see what um, what gets highlighted when I select this. So these two columns are part of a group. And by going into the group, now uh, I double click to get into the group and then I double click again to get into the the component edit mode. You can see when I select this face here, the, uh, the corresponding face on that other column component is selected there. So uh, if we as a comparison between the uh, the scale and uh, and the move tool, if I wanted to raise up or make these columns shorter, and I chose I selected everything in that component and then choose the scale tool, it gives me a box to use. If I want to make these columns wider, I grab the side handle. And when I pull it, what you can see is happening here is the bevel at the top stays the same, but the sides gets all out of proportion because it's it's scaling the whole the whole component. So, um, and that's not what I want to do in this case. I, I wanted to make the column. Let's say well, let's make it an inch wider. So rather than using the scale tool to do that, I'm just going to drag a box around the geometry on one side of this column. And then when I take the move tool and it'll just move that geometry, you can see how the bevel stays the same 
all these proportions stay the same, these styles on the side, all that stuff stays the same, but I get a resized column. And you can see how you could make those skinnier or wider and maintain uh, the geometry of the bevels and such. And the thing I wanted to, to change on this was the height of this bottom. So I've, I've done the same thing. I've just selected, I uh, got out of my component edit mode. I've just selected all the geometry at the bottom of this column. And what I actually want to do is just raise up this bevel portion so it has like a plinth on the bottom. And if I draw, drag from left to right, it selects this whole column. It selects everything that it touches. And that's not what I want to do either. I just want to move this one beveled section. So I'm going to pivot around. If I was to to grab this selection at, at uh, sorry, jumping around here. If I grab it at this angle, it's going to try to select other geometry like this bottom. And then when I go to move it, it's going to kind of make a mess out of things and do something I'm not trying to do. So I want to select a view that allows me to grab just the geometry I want, nothing more, nothing less. And now I can just raise this up, let's say six inches, and you can see what that's done. It's raised that bottom of these two columns. That's what it looked like. This is what it does look like. You can see because it's a component, it's changing both instances of that. And um, so we can do the same thing with the top of this column. I think maybe I can just double click that surface and drag this down an inch. Yeah, let's go two inches just because. So you can see by setting these columns up in the drawing as components that I can easily change the attributes of those columns. And, and change the look of the the fireplace, the mantle there. So another thing that might come into play here is uh, with the code requirements of clearances, this mantle is too close to this firebox and sticking too far out. So things need to be adjusted to account for that so that it, it doesn't violate a combustible material proximity code. So uh, another thing we could do here uh, when I d designed or uh, modeled this mantle I, I made these two items. They're just groups. There's not a, they're not a component because I, there's only one of them. I didn't want to complicate things by making a component. So I just made it a group and by holding down the up arrow key selected more than I want there. Okay. Okay, now I've got just those components. You can see before I was moving a whole bunch of stuff I didn't want to. But if I use the go back here, if I use the up arrow key then the only direction this mantle is going to move is in the blue direction up and down. So let's say we wanted to raise it up three inches. And uh, and then if this was sticking too far out, we'd have to do some more modification. I'm going to jump back into these columns. And here again, I'm, I'm selecting a view that allows me to grab the geometry I want. I'm just going to move this back. Oh, let's move it back 2 inches, 2.5 inches. That gets our columns a little flatter. And we'll click out of those, jump back into this mantle. And now I'm in the, the group edit mode for the mantle. I can grab the front of this mantle piece and do this piece first. It's just got a flat front on it, so I'm going to take this back two and a half inches. I just enter that on the keyboard. That reduces that. Go in here to this the mantle crown molding here. Sometimes you got to watch and make sure that you're not grabbing some geometry you don't want. I'm going to pivot around here clumsily. Yeah, we're good there. So then I'm going to grab the move tool. And rather than try to get this to line up, I've just been reducing everything by two and a half inches. So 
so I'm going to click the left arrow key and move this back. Oops, not 25 inches. <laughs> 2.5 inches, that's more like it. So you can see just by systematically going in to these various groups and components, I can I can change what this whole design looks like. And now our with all this our columns are short. So I can go in and uh, adjust these either way I want. I think I'll just move all this geometry up. Trying to get it to index to the bottom of that mantle. It doesn't want to do it. I'm just going to go 3, enter, because I know we moved that up 3 inches. So you can see with these steps that all these things can be can be modified to adjust for various design changes and proportions, whatever you want to do. I'm going to grab the top of this granite and move it up three inches. Looks like three wasn't enough there. 3.5. 3.25. So now other things, other proportions, maybe I don't like some of these other attributes. You can, you can work them around and change and um, get things to work out. If you noticed, somehow when I moved that top of that granite, I didn't use the up arrow key, so it moved it sideways and up at the same time and created this funny little space over here. So I'm just going to back it up. And go back in here. Maybe I can use the push pull tool on that surface and just back button's a great thing. I'm going to zoom in so I'm grabbing just that top of that granite. There we go. That's what I wanted to end up with. And uh, you, you can work these different features out by zooming in, zooming out, finding on what you're working with, and um, if something's not behaving, chances are there was a, a clumsy command or um, movement at some point. Anyways, so you can see how I have gone in and using these features changed the configuration here. And this is, in my mind, simpler than going through on a pencil sketch. If you wanted to make those same sketches, you'd be, or same changes, you'd be in here erasing and smudging and doing different things to get the look to be different. And this way, um, you can adjust these various attributes to meet codes or profiles or proportions, depending on what you'd like to do. And the other thing that could easily happen in a design like this is um, that you might decide that these bookcases are too wide or too narrow and want to make some adjustments. So if I, if I would select this cabinet component and go into the component mode, component edit mode, select everything, and then use the scale tool. There's a handle on the outside here. I pivoted around so I could see it. You can see if I change the width of this cabinet that the proportions on the doors get funny. The styles and the styles change width and the, the panels, these little raised panels, the angles all change, which isn't what I want. I want to just change the size of the cabinet and the door and keep the millwork the same. So to do that, because that's a component and it's kind of hard to work on it in this room here, you know, let's go, we'll just change this one instead. Another thing you can do is by selecting a component like this, move tool, hit the control key, and just make a, a copy of that whole cabinet. Let's say we wanted to re change the width of those cabinets by three inches. So whatever I do to this component will now change those. So I'm going to jump into this. Let's just move these doors out of the way. I'm going to move those. I'm just going to move them down 30 inches. Let's go 36 inches so they're out of the way. And now if I take the rest of this cabinet, we want to change the size of this. 
and let's reduce it by 8 inches. So if we select the geometry on one side of this and then I move it 8 inches, then what that's done is, is narrowed up the cabinet itself and left the styles the same. So now each of these doors has to be reduced by 2 inches. So I'm just going to delete those, take this last door which is a component, so I'm going to back up here and delete these doors instead. This one will just move straight up 30 inches which is where we took it from. But I said it was 36 inches wasn't it? Okay that puts it back where we wanted it. Now I go into the component mode component edit mode, grab this geometry and move it two inches. And now if we take this edited component, take the move tool, hit control, I'm just going to move it over one door width and then go 3x, enter. So what I did with that process is to go in and change the widths of those cabinets. Let's move this guy over here. You can see I was jumping around. I'm going to select the right arrow key and move this over so that it meets with the surface. And so that's kind of how that that's done. Some of those uh, ways of going in and editing a digital design. And this the process of Editing these saves a lot of drawing. You just make one cabinet door and make the changes to it. Make one column as a component and it makes changes to both the mantelpiece. We're just choosing the geometry we want to work with and selecting and moving that geometry rather than using the scale tool. And just to kind of reinforce the point here, if we go in and try to change the the depth of this mantle with the scale tool, you can see how it changes the profile of the crown, which is what we don't want. So the method that we that I went through earlier shows how to change the width or the depth of the mantle without changing the proportion by using the move tool instead of the scale tool. So uh, there's some of the things you might encounter in working with digital design and working through proportions and shapes and configurations and rather than going through two erasers and a sketch pad full of paper you can just click around on a digital model and get quite a bit accomplished. So I'm going to stop this part one video here and I'll come back with a part two and show how I created uh, this cabinet door component as well as the group for the crown molding on the mantle. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll check out the second video and hope this helps encourage you to make the switch from from sketching to sketch up thanks for watching